All right, guys, this is just an update of uh, where I'm at with my boat and my setup. Um, this is more so just going to be about the boat itself, not so much the uh, individual components. I'll have other videos coming detailing all that. Um, so I got some decals made, named my boat. You can see that. Can you jig it? If you've ever seen the Warriors movie from... Uh, the 70s they say can you dig it so got a decal on each side one on the back got a little cast crew decal there check these guys out on uh, on Facebook check out their website cast312.com they make some pretty awesome fishing based apparel so definitely hit them up. Uh, I got my three seats mounted. These two rear ones are on uh, removable uh, quick release bases. They both swivel and uh, of course fold down. And then I've got my seat up front on a swivel post. I love that swivel post. Um, it really helps when people are in the in the back and kind of moving around and you can swivel from one direction to the other to kind of balance yourself out so I don't know I've heard people say that they kind of felt like they were falling over but just like when it would kick and swivel but I didn't really have that issue so uh, four rod holders here I really like these rod holders actually I used to have on my old setup the um, the Bass Pro red and black ones, those things are just cheap as hell. You can lock the rod in like that, tilt up and down. The only thing that I kind of wish they would change is if they would have had a cutout here, it would allow you to tilt the whole rod holder up more. Because you get about right there. And if I wanted to go completely upright, I can't do that. Got those installed in the VersaTrack just uh, drilled a couple quarter inch holes through the uh, mount itself and then a couple carriage bolts I think they were three quarter inch long no these were uh, I want to say an inch long actually and then just a lock washer and some thumb screws so got two in the rear here two in the front I've got six upright rod holders here. Got my net in that one there. Um, that way, uh, if I'm out fishing with people, you know, if I've got three people on here, which I really never plan on having, um, we could each bring two rods, or ideally, if it's two people, we could each have three rods. And I get plenty of turn out of this, uh, out of the motor with those there. Um, will eventually hit, but I mean, I'm not really turning that sharp to begin with. So that placement of those rod holders really works out pretty good. Got uh, my navigation lights mounted. I got the rear one here, folds up and down. I just needed something small just to keep it legal. And then the two front ones. And this uh, one I already broke here. I was waiting for some people to get out of the water and they finally got out. And I turned my trolling motor back on and didn't realize that it was kicked to the right and boom, right into a dock. So my recommendation is probably put them, if I could do it again, I'd put them just right up top here. And what I did was just drill the hole for the wire and then drilled and tapped two holes there to hold them in place. When I bought these, they were, they were dirt cheap anyway. So I ended up buying two of each. So it's no big deal. I'll get that replaced pretty quickly here. For the, uh, the anchor system, I'm definitely going to do something different. I don't really care too much for this. Um, 
This was like eight bucks at Farm and Fleet. I've seen these on Amazon for uh, a few bucks. Um, obviously, I don't transport it like this, but while I'm on the water, I'll leave it like that. Uh, when I'm transporting it, I just let some rope out and then just set it in the back here. But the issue with this is um, you just end up with a bunch of rope. And it, it, while you're out fishing, you're not really going to take the time to bundle it up nicely. You're just kind of going to set it in the back there and it gets tangled up with other stuff. So um, this is also made for a thicker rope than what I got here. I'm going to end up changing it at some point, but it's meant more so for something like this. Um, it kind of cinches down on itself. So you pull up, let it down. Um, the idea is that when you let it down quick enough, it's supposed to cinch, but because this rope is so thin, it passes right through that hole. And if I turn it sideways, however, it'll pull down and cinch. So it works. You just kind of got to be mindful of that. And then the rope is thin enough that it actually, if I pull, you can see it starts to slip. So it's a bit of a miscalculation on my behalf. And then I'll usually just tie it around the cleat here. So. I'll be changing that at some point. I'll probably get a little winch or a, a hoist just to keep the rope nice and organized. Um, over here, just something I was trying out. Got this little magnetic strip from Harbor Freight. Uh, it just goes in the Versa track. And um, it really worked out well. I used, again, I used some carriage bolts, quarter inch by I think three quarter, and just nuts in the ends there. And these magnets are pretty damn strong too. Um, I just kind of put stuff like just uh, pliers and a razor blade there. And it holds all, you know, on the highway, it doesn't fall off or anything. That's It holds pretty strong. Got my bilge pump down here. Um, might be kind of hard to see because of the sun, but what I did was, uh, these bilge pumps kind of have somewhat of a universal base on them, so um, I took the base off and used some 3M5200 and glued the base directly to the deck. And then I have a float switch there. Um, did the same thing with that, 5200 right to the deck. I wanted them to be sitting as low as possible, so I didn't want to have to put them on some kind of bracket and have them spaced off from the bottom because if I do start to take on water I want that to kick on as quickly as I, I could get it on. I have the uh, the hose coming up and just out the back here. I do have that um, a manual override up front on my switch panel for the bilge pump because I do want to manually kick that on when I feel like I need to instead of just relying on that float switch I don't completely trust it so so here I've got uh, it's like a recessed uh, power switch it's just the main cutoff for the battery it's one of these cheap little keys these are kind of universal to these kinds of switches but I've seen a lot of these and they kind of um, I wanted a recessed one because I wanted it to be pretty flush here, or as flush as I could get it. Otherwise they stick out like three inches or so and I knew that I would probably end up knocking the key out and breaking it, so just got the manual switch there. That gives me power to the whole switch panel, it's kind of hard to see in the light, but um, Got my fish finder on here. Um, I know you don't have to have the fish finder on a switch, but I do want to be able to kill power wherever I can, if I can. I've got my nav lights. Not going to be able to see those on too well. It's pretty bright out here. And then the manual switch for the bilge pump. So, um, these other switches that I'm not using at the moment, I do have other plans for. I kind of wanted to future-proof everything I did on this boat, so I 
got more uh, switches than I need to needed to and more fuses uh, spots on the fuse blocks than I needed to um, at some point I am going to put some lighting along the gunnel and some headlights up front and on the rear here so when I'm taking the boat out of the water if it's late at night I could uh, kind of shine them toward the dock or wherever I need to I also might run another fish finder in the rear here for when I'm uh, going a little bit more uh, quick with the uh, with the outboard motor just pop that seat out of the uh, the mount there just so I could kind of show you what's going on up front here you get two keys for this hatch um, it's a pretty good amount of space in here got a couple life jackets my foot pedal for the uh, trolling motor that I'm probably almost never gonna use although it is a nice one it's much better than the cable driven ones like I've seen on the um, uh, some of the other models it's just it's so much of a lower profile it's like a push button rather than um, like a giant rocker so you, there's really no reason to cut a little cutaway there in the front deck to recess it a um, couple oars and I still have some wiring that I got to clean up in here uh, but just want to show you guys what I did with the wiring I kind of made somewhat of a um, waterproof uh, giant electrical box and everything just runs through here try to break this down and just kind of make sense of this so I've got my uh, power coming off my shutoff switch to my positive coming through this terminal block and then it splits off I've got um, let's see I've got the trolling motor is one of these the switch panel is one of these um, I have labels that I'm putting on these two just so that I kind of know have a better idea what's going on on the fly and then one of these positives also runs um, to another fuse block and terminal block that I have back here and the reason I did that is I want to be able to wire stuff into the back such as uh, the nav light and the bilge pump I do have those running off switches from the front but when I get my lighting and stuff um, hooked up in the back I do want to just be able to pop in right there rather than having to run wiring back to front that's not my permanent plan for the wiring here by the way this this here is just temporary until I get it tucked up under there I'll probably run a piece of PVC and just paint it rather than having this sit like this but anyways um, the trolling motor here I have it's probably overkill but I have it going through a fuse it's a 60 amp fuse and then going through a 60 amp breaker as well and then um, that just runs back out the box into the positive on my trolling motor female plug here and then um, my positive I'm sorry my negative I have also going to the rear of the boat for that uh, terminal block I have back there um, I've got a little fuse block here for anything that's fused um, I've got the fish finder the helix 5 plugged in there um, and a couple other things I just can't really recall right now and then another bus bar so just wanted to keep all the wiring contained I just kind of I picked this box up from Bass Pro for like $12 and uh, that way I don't have a bunch of exposed wiring um, or terminal blocks that are just you know you kind of see how much stuff I had piled in here 
and I don't want any of that stuff to make contact with any of the wiring so that's the way I went I'm pretty happy with it like I said all this wiring down here is gonna get cleaned up still a work in progress so I also have this little kind of uh, ammo can I just have some of the documentation in there, a little bit of tooling in case I gotta do any kind of repairs. I tried to use every fastener that I put anywhere on this boat. I tried to use Phillips head screws, that way I could get to whatever I need to. I've seen people drill all these out and then just put rivets in them. I didn't want to do that because if I have to get to any of the wiring while I'm out on the water, I want to be able to get to it without having to get a drill. And then, uh, you know, rivet it again. So I'll probably end up putting some emergency stuff in here. A whistle, some, um, some of those plastic rain ponchos. Just stuff that I might need in a pinch. So um, just the front deck here. Normally I'm going to be up front. And uh, I went with the Helix 5 with side imaging. Um, I really like it it's uh enough for me to um see what i need to see that's for sure so uh, i didn't want to spend like the 40 50 dollars on a ram mount so i ended up going with um if you look up magic arm on amazon or ebay they make these uh arms that are for digital cameras like high-end digital cameras and some of these hold up to 10 pounds um, the reason I'm getting so much bounce here is I have two screws out on the bottom because I was looking at some wiring earlier so uh, normally though I mean this thing holds like I can if I were to push and pull on it if that whole sheet piece of sheet metal wasn't moving I can't move it um, definitely a good alternative I think I paid $15 for this arm here and uh, just drilled a hole in the original bracket and put a fender washer on top and a nut and I could still remove the head unit just like you normally would just with the gimbal screws um, brings it a lot closer to me makes it easier to see and I can move it I mean this thing's basically on ball joints this magic arm so you can move it it'll articulate in any direction you can think and then I have plenty of slack in the wiring there to move it as I need to I cut the uh, ring terminals off of the power drive and put a male plug there female plug there and then on my battery charger I cut the ends off which were alligator clips and I put another male on so that way when I get home and it's time to charge the battery which I have in there and I have it uh, strapped to the deck instead of having to mess around with trying to weasel my hands in there and get alligator clips on the terminals I just plug my charger right in there in order to allow that to actually charge I do have to have this switch in the on position so um, this is my first major wiring project I guess if you want to call it a major wiring project I've never really done anything like this but Saw a lot of video guy of uh, what other guys were doing and took some pointers from them. Um, one thing I will say though, I could not for the life of me get this wire to snake through that channel that goes under the boat and comes out back by the uh, boat plug. Couldn't do it. Tried from front to back, back to front, used the fish tape, used the rope. Just kept getting snagged somewhere about here. And that was with uh, just a couple pieces of 14 gauge wire trying to go through and I kept getting stuck. So I figured, well, I'm definitely not going to be able to get through with the transducer plug, which is, I don't know, maybe half inch square, something like that. So I figured why bother, just ran it this way and I'll get that hidden and out of the way. So, um... The boat seats too comfortably. Of course it's gonna rock, you're gonna lean. Um, not really the kind of boat you need to be up and walking all over anyway. 
but uh, I haven't had three people on here. The only time there's going to be three people on here is it's, if it's uh, myself, my wife, and my daughter. Anybody else, it's just me and the one other person. Got an aluminum yardstick here. And uh, just kind of screwed that to the inside here. Um, I didn't. I was gonna go with a radio that I would wire in and everything, but then I figured I'd just be chewing up battery and have to drill a lot more holes and big ones for speakers. So I just use one of these Bluetooth guys. I could charge it. Um, it's waterproof. It stops working. I just throw it away. Get another one. They're pretty cheap. Twenty bucks. You can get a fairly decent one. As for the transducer. Originally, my plan was to use um, this uh, Scotty transducer arm. Uh, these are kind of made for kayaks, but I was going to try to make this work. So I had already bolted and screwed the bracket for it there, and then I realized how completely flimsy this is, and it just wasn't going to work. So I sucked it up put my big boy pants on and drilled through the transom which I just I just didn't want to do it I didn't want to run the risk of taking out water but what I ended up doing was using this aluminum block which I had laying around drilled through ho two holes through it and then uh, drilled some with a larger drill bit drilled some counter sinks for the two screws that are actually uh, taking it through the transom then I put um, some 3m 5200 on the threads and then sandwiched a good amount of 5200 between that block and the uh, the transom and then mounted the transducer these are pretty universal Scotty makes a ton of different accessories that you could pop in there so I'm just gonna buy maybe another rod holder I don't know and maybe I don't I can't do an anchor winch right there because you drop the anchor you're landing right on the transducer so that's it that's what I've gotten done I'm not exactly finished but I don't think anybody ever really is when it comes to these boats on the trailer so far I just added these guides I ended up getting these after my first and only time out so I don't know how well they work I have heard that this these particular ones will rub off and kind of scuff up the boat but it's gonna happen it's gonna happen so that's all i've got for now i'll go into more detail on the trolling motor and on the fish finder and everything else with time if you have any questions feel free to ask